Hey everyone, Daniel here with Slow Haste. Thanks for joining me today. I wanted to do a quick introduction to this video, so if you feel like skipping ahead to the meat and potatoes, feel free to do so by clicking on the chapters at the timeline below. So recently I have admittedly and obviously been enamored by the Electron Dig Attack. To me, it feels like a perfectly balanced sampler for the type of music that I've been making, primarily chillwave inspired, beat driven electronica. The limitation of the eight tracks combined with the ability to parameter lock any parameter on any trig of any step of a sequence presents you with a delightful dichotomy of disciplined decision making and unlimited power. That said, the principles that I'm going to be discussing in this video can be applied to any sampler, hardware or software. So if you're not familiar with the Dig Attack, don't be intimidated by the video and I encourage you to stick around to see how you can apply these principles to your preferred sampler. So some of you may not know, but one of my first musical loves was the guitar particularly this one, if the camera is focusing. I've played stringed electric instruments in multiple bands in past lives, and my affinity for guitar pedals is actually what led me to getting into synth hardware in the first place. I do tend to incorporate some minor guitar work and textures and things into my electronic music, but I haven't been doing a lot of guitar playing properly recently. That said, I do have a bunch of random loops and samples stored on various hardware devices from years past, and I revisit these from time to time. So for the piece that I'm gonna be demonstrating in this video, I started out with a simple two chord progression that I recorded through some effects on my pedal board straight into the Dig Attack. As I mentioned, occasionally I'll go through my devices and listen to the guitar samples that I have. And these two chords in particular struck a chord as I was listening back to them recently. I started getting really inspired and in my head I heard this kind of contemplative warped hazy beat behind the chord progression. So I got inspired and ended up recording this tune that I'm really enjoying so far. I want to play a bit of that song for you and show you how I kind of pieced it together using the guitar sample and how I arranged the other pieces of percussion and melodic elements as well. So really quickly, also before we jump into it, I just wanted to announce that I recently made a Patreon page for Slow Haste. I did this as kind of a celebration of passing 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, so thank you all so much for sticking around. And I've created a variety of tiers with different benefits, ranging from free audio downloads of my release albums to exclusive audio tracks, and at the higher tiers you can get one-on-one -on -one lessons or consultations with me regarding electronic music or synthesis. Feel free to peruse the different rewards available at the link in my description below. If you've ever felt so inclined to support my channel or my musical endeavors, this is one of the easiest and most direct ways to do so, and it provides you with rewards in return. Win-win. Anyhow, without further ado, let's swing over to my desk and I will get into my process of incorporating guitar samples when I make beats with the Dig Attack. Welcome to my desk, so kind of you to join me. We've even been joined by the candle, because vibes, <laughs> and we'll keep that over here. So let's just get right into it. I'll start off by showing you the sample. Also, don't mind the finger condom on my thumb. I have a kitchen injury, so we're trying not to get things too bloodied up over here. Anyways, here's the guitar sample. <laughs> you can see there's a lot of static and noise. I've got some gain, some uh, light overdrive, we've got some tape delay, and we've got reverb, and perhaps a little bit of vibrato. Nice, crisp, but hazy sample. And I've done a, quite a bit to play around with that sample here. As you can see, I've got it panned a little bit to the right. We've got a fair amount of overdrive on there and we've adjusted the length of the sample as well. So what I did, and pardon me if I stumble around with my actual uh, trig settings, with which sample is on which number, it's been a, a week or two since I played around with this, but I want to show you the beat that I made on top of that sample. <laughs> going to take out the sample now and just listen to the beat. So it's just four parts. So we have a kick pattern. Very straightforward. And then I'll play our main snare pattern. As you can see, we have some parameter locked steps on top of the main snare sample. And in comes our hi-hat. Kind of a fuzzy shaker hi-hat sound, right? 
on track number five. And then I wanna show you this sample by itself. This, uh, this sample comes from the OP1. It is, yeah, it's just a, a percussion sample that I loaded from my OP1. I think I got it from OP1.fun um, or OP.fun. I can't remember what the website is called, but it's one of the more popular sample sets and it's just this really great snap sound. And there's some spring reverb on there um, from the OP1. I have it overdriven and here's what it sounds like sequenced. So it's pretty basic and then pretty wild, pretty basic and then pretty wild. So I basically have um, some rolls, some retrigs programmed on these steps here, all at kind of like different rates um, and different lengths. And then like this, one of these steps, yeah, just like super distorted, has some delay to really just kind of uh, reduce the need to use multiple tracks for different percussion sounds. So I really took advantage of the parameter locking here on the dig attack. So yeah, that was the beat that I kind of heard in my head was that that basic backbone of kick hi-hat and snare with those kind of like da -da 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 rolls. And I really like how that turned out. Next, I decided that I wanted to implement a kind of like hazy pad sample. So I believe, uh, yeah, I believe I put this on track eight. Yep. So I just looped part of this sample. That is from the Micro Freak, the Arturia Micro Freak that I had on loan. And I just sampled some pads. And this is, I think it's actually from a, a little bit of a chord progression, but I just looped one of those chords within the pad. And you can actually hear some harmonic content that isn't really in the key. There's like a dun, dun, dun. But you can't really hear that contextually with everything else that is going on. So I'm going to just play the that pad sample with the guitar sample. Yeah, there it is. That was that the first pattern that I made, and I was super happy with that. And I obviously wanted to take it further and develop that a little bit. So I ended up developing a second pattern, and I'm just going to play the whole thing for you so you can hear what it sounds like. But after that first pattern, it transitions to this. So you can hear it's quite a bit different. It progresses the song melodically and harmonically. The chord progression advances. I am going to start off by showing you what I did with the guitar sample. So we're gonna go back to the first pattern and I'm gonna show you the transition between pattern one and two, or pattern three in this case because of how I programmed it. I'll explain later. the sample so it's the same chord progression but reversed and I thought this deserves a bass line it deserves like a kind of a meaty punchy bass line so I sampled a pluck bass a synthesized pluck bass that I programmed from my module mutable instruments plats I really like this one specific sound and I use it on a lot of my tracks here's the waveform Lots of overdrive on that. Have a little bit of a low pass filter with a, a wide resonant peak. And I cut the 
pace a little bit too. Let's just listen to that by itself. And there's some bit, bit crushing on there too. So yeah, I, I stepped back a little bit with the, you know, those transient attacks on the guitar part because it's strummed and that's in reverse now. So you don't get those transients. And I replaced that with that punchiness of the, the bass line. And I'm going to play the percussion section now. Whoops. So it's a little bit um, what I would call spicier. It's a little bit spicier, but it's also a little bit lighter. And I've talked about this in some of my other videos, but when I transition uh, and progress chord or chordal content in a piece, I like to kind of add flares to the percussion, but also reduce the intensity and forwardness of it. So this first pattern you'll hear is a bit more overt. And then I just to take it a step back in terms of the intensity of the sounds themselves. Listen closely. This is pattern one. You can really hear it in that snap sample with all of the rolls. I what I did is on those parameter locked steps, I just turned the filter down. I turned the decay down. So the, the actual samples themselves are a lot snappier and shorter. And what this does is it gives some of that additional melodic content, some room to breathe. And speaking of additional melodic content, you may have heard that I added a, uh, a truly melodic lead line in, and this is from blank forms, tape Haze three sample pack. It is, oh, what is it? I don't even know if it has a name, um, but it is just kind of like a, I kind of hear like a horn, kind of like a horn synth sound. Like a sad, distant robot trumpet just by itself. Obviously, lots of delay and reverb there. Filtered pretty heavily, too, with a high pass. And there's one final element on track eight that I added. It is another pad and the pad comes from um, it comes from a morphogene sample that I recorded on my modular and it's a very tiny slice of a morph of a morphogene sample that is kind of long I did a lot of long ambient pad samples that were kind of glitchy in nature so I could just slice little parts of them and uh, use them as textural elements in songs which I did here and you can hear it dance around the stereo field um, I'll play it by itself first And it is a looping sample with one single trigger. And it, with everything else, it sounds like this. <laughs> Pardon me. So yeah, that's the, the meat and potatoes, as I mentioned, um, those two patterns going back and forth. However, in my little performance jam video that I posted, you'll notice there are some other patterns woven into the piece. And what I did is I created copies of each of these patterns of, uh, of pattern one and pattern three. And on two and four, respectively, I put copies of those and then really messed with 
the the control all parameter function, which is where you hold the track button and you turn any parameter knob and it affects all of the parameters. So it's really fun to do with like sample length or, um, or f you know, the filter or the decay. And you can get these like really choppy, interesting patterns that have essentially the same content as like these main patterns, but sound totally different. And I'll show you, uh, for example, this pattern I'm about to play is all the same step settings and samples as pattern one. But with everything kind of messed around with, so you get these crazy, this crazy like choppy ghost of a, of a pattern. <laughs> And that performance video is going to be linked below so you can see how I like transitioned everything and, and built it all up. Um, and then this is the, the same concept, the same proof of concept that I did with, with pattern number three, but the alternate version, which I placed at pattern number four. So I basically just changed the pitch and put like this crazy filter with an, an envelope with a decay envelope uh, on on the filter, and yeah, I really like how that turned out. Again, I'm not gonna like play the transitions for you because you can hear them in that piece that I will have linked below. Um, but that's the basic idea of what I did. Anyways, I really had a lot of fun with this piece. If you couldn't tell, and. I definitely hope you go and listen to that original track. It will be available for download on Patreon for free if you sign up for a specific tier. So again, it would be awesome if you would check that out. Anyways, that is it for today's video. So thanks so much again for joining me. I am going to call it a night. I'm going to take my candle and we are going to close out the studio. So I hope you all have a fantastic evening or day or whatever time it is, wherever you are. And thanks again for joining as always. Take care.